I made an oopsie. How wonderful person. Time for me to address my mistake from a previous video. Super embarrassing and doesn't have a good excuse actually. Okay, the excuse was that I was obviously tired, I did not read things properly, and most importantly, I read sources that I shouldn't have been reading. And here, this is a perfect opportunity for me to thank all of you wonderful people, all of you super brilliant people, for actually pointing this out early on and for making me notice that I made the mistake. Now, I'm not going to list everyone because there's actually a lot of people that mentioned this, but those of you that did, thank you so much. Like, honestly, thank you. You are super smarty pants and I'm super proud of you. And I really sincerely hope that I added to your intelligence with some of the previous videos. But anyway, I'm talking about the polar drift study. And it's really the word polar drift that really threw me off. Okay, so here's what's happening. In the video that I made yesterday that is now unlisted, the link to which you can find in the description, I've discussed the study that finds a connection between the redistribution of water, including the melting of glaciers on the planet, and the change in the overall mass distribution on the surface of the planet, and the observed changes in the polar drift. Now, to be honest, I should have been super careful when I read this. But stupidly enough, and because I was tired, and because I didn't do enough homework, and also because of some of the other sources I've read that were not the study, I basically thought they're talking about polar drift. This polar drift. The one that involves the magnetic north of our planet. You know, the one that we've talked about before, and the one that's basically is still mysterious and still not very well understood. And this is indeed what we usually refer to as the polar drift. You know, the polar drift. See? Polar drift. And here also, see? Polar drift. And basically, after that, things kind of escalated. Because I was short on time, skimming through the paper, not reading everything in detail, and basically not analyzing every single graph like I would normally do, and not doing a very thorough investigation on everything involved here, I basically kind of filled in the blanks and ended up with a video that I'm not very proud of. Uh, very unproud of. Very disappointed in. Now, I have made a lot of mistakes in the past. And I've made some silly mistakes in the past that I never really addressed. Like one time I made a video where I miscalculated the distance uh, by which Earth moves away from the Sun. And I think I came up with a relatively large value and then someone corrected me that the value was much smaller. But those mistakes, well, they're not really that big. But this here, this mistake with the poor drift and the whole thing that I needed to address. That is something that is... I'm really sorry. I'm like super, 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 super sorry. And honestly, um, yeah. I need a break. I think I need a break because a lot of the stuff I'm reading now, sometimes I kind of phase out and start filling in the blanks with things I think they're talking about. And that is not good, especially for someone that tries to communicate science. Now, I think this is the first such mistakes, first major mistake I've made in the last, maybe I would say, couple of years. But that is a big mistake and I definitely need to correct myself. I need to change my system and possibly take a break. So there's probably going to be a break coming up relatively soon. But anyway, so what exactly is happening with this and what's happening with the paper? Now, first of all, let's do this really quickly. Polar drift here is still a mystery. It's happening, we know it's happening, but it probably does not necessarily have anything to do with the changes that we're observing in the ice distribution and water distribution on the planet. Now, this is a hypothesis someone proposed, I think a few years ago, this was actually talked about by some of the scientists, but it was never necessarily proven, and it's an idea that someone has, but it has no actual proof behind it. What this paper is talking about, and what has been sort of shown in the past few years by several different scientists, refers to the concept of the true polar wonder. Now, this is a slightly different concept and has nothing to do with the magnetic field whatsoever. But it does have something to do with the axis you see right here. The axis of spin itself. Something that can be expressed this way. So, essentially, the planetary spin shifts to a different location. Now, this is different from what's known as the precession, which is when the actual planet itself tilts a little bit. And it literally affects this location. It changes the location of the actual north and the south pole of the planet itself. And in the past, some of the studies even established that this location has moved quite a lot in the last few hundreds of millions of years. All of this due to the various changes in the distribution of mass on the planet. So specifically when the supercontinents moved around, when the water was in different locations, all of this moved and shifted around quite a lot in the past. And now it seems to be moving a lot faster than in the last few decades as well. Specifically, since the 90s, it seems to have accelerated its motion, overall increasing by about 17 times. And that is what the scientists discovered 
and attributed to the changes in the ice layers and the distribution of water on the planets. Now, that has nothing to do with the magnetic field though, and also, that is not actually called polar drift. The term here is true polar wonder. And so this is not the same as that other thing I mentioned. It should have been really called true polar wonder. Now, obviously, wrong words in the title should not really be a good excuse for why I made a video that made a mistake. And also, some of the things mentioned in the video are actually correct. We still don't really know what effect this is going to have on the climate of the planet and how this might actually affect the planet in the future. But what is true, and I guess what is correct, is that the effects are obviously there and the planet is changing the axis of rotation faster than it has in the past. But whether this is related to the magnetic shift and the magnetic north, that's another question. It's a hypothesis, it does not have an actual data and actual proof behind it, but um, the change is also there as well. Also, to make things even more complicated, we obviously need to change some of these terms. We have too many north poles. There's a north magnetic pole, there's a geographic north pole, there's a north geomagnetic pole, and all of them have a lot of terms associated with them that also tend to be really confusing. These confusions happen a lot. So, for example, the north magnetic pole and the north geomagnetic pole are actually not the same thing. The one that's moving is this one right here. This is basically a kind of an approximation showing us where the north magnetic pole should be if Earth is essentially one large magnet. So these two are not the same. But the one we're talking about in this video, the one I'm trying to correct, is the geographic North Pole. And that's the one that's being shifted right now by the changes in the climate and the distribution of ice and water on the planet. So there you go. Hopefully that sort of clarified things. Now, once again, super sorry, um, highly apologetic, but also this is a super important message here. First of all, people make mistakes. Second of all, it's sort of important to not think of these mistakes as something absolutely horrible. It, it is not the end of the world, and most importantly, this is literally how we learn. In the beginning of this channel, I was making a tremendous amount of mistakes, but with time I learned to become better, to address my mistakes, and to dramatically improve everything I was doing. Our entire learning experience as a human being is basically through making mistakes. This is something we learn in childhood. However, then we enter school, middle school, high school, and so on, and that is when this idea of mistakes being absolutely horrible, something you should avoid, something that results in a complete failure, sort of becomes engraved in us, and I absolutely hate that. It's actually one of the reasons I've had a lot of different discussions and a lot of different conflicts with some of my colleagues when I was a full-time high school teacher. I was actually against the idea of seeing mistakes and errors as something that should be avoided I was encouraging all of my students to continuously make mistakes and to learn from them. Mistakes like this. And I'm totally okay having a lot of different horrible comments in the description telling me how I should stop making videos and how I'm definitely not YouTube material or should not be making educational content. Because that is literally the opposite of what I believe in as an educator. I believe the more mistakes you make and the more you address those mistakes and reflect on them, the more you learn as an individual as a scientist, as a professional, as anyone, any profession, everywhere, except I guess for skydiving, but that joke is a little bit old and really should not be repeated. In pretty much most professions, mistakes are absolutely crucial, and learning from them is even more crucial. So I'm seeing this as my learning opportunity, and um, basically I need to improve my technique a little bit, avoid certain sources, and most importantly, I guess, uh, take a break. I need a break. So, uh, on that note, I'm not taking a break just yet, but I am going to be taking it possibly in the next few weeks, maybe a month or so, but you'll hear more about this in the future. On that note, um, well, yeah, so there you have it. So, this happened because of the terms and stuff, and uh, now I'm making a correction. Things uh, didn't go as planned in the previous video. Once again, I just wanted to express my sincere gratitude to those of you that pointed this out, because this had to be addressed. But I definitely stand by my opinion about mistakes. Make them, learn from them, and embrace them. That's basically my educational policy. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.